Hey everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing and uh, today I am going to have some fun because I'm going to show you one of the latest new features of Embrilliance Stitch Artist Level 3 software. Now, uh, we are very, very thrilled in Australia to be the distributor for the Embrilliance embroidery software here and uh, the developer Brian is a very good friend of mine, we've known him for years uh, it never never ceases to amaze us with some of the new features and tools that he brings out for the software. So, um, if you are an Embrilliance user, you're going to enjoy this. If you have Stitch Artist Level 3, you're going to be really excited. And if you don't have Stitch Artist Level 3, you may want it. So I am forewarning you that is, uh, it's going to be fantastic. What we're going to be doing today is creating a badge. And um, yeah, you might think, wow, that's no big deal. We've done all that before. And we have but uh, Embrilliance now features in its level three Stitch Artist version, a simulated Mero Stitch. Now, let's just talk about that, a Mero Stitch. When we talk about badges, badges have been around for a long time and becoming increasingly popular. The edge of a badge is typically, when it's done commercially, is made using a Mero machine. Now, what a Mero machine is, and you'll see a picture of it in a minute, is a, um, it's like an old style overlocker. That's the best way to explain it. And it does a very special stitch. Uh, they still sell these machines and commercial badge makers use them and create amazing borders around badges. Um, it's, it's kind of a bit of a skill you develop on those machines. They're not the easiest things in the world to use and they're very expensive. They, they sell for about $5,000 here in Australia. So um, not something you're going to likely have just for doing a few badges. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And Brilliance has solved the problem because we now have a, an unbelievably good simulated stitch for your embroidery machine that looks as good as a marrow stitch, to be honest. So let's have a look at what project we're going to put together today. I have here in front of me a couple of quick badges I did using a heart shape um, out of the Embrilliance uh, system. And I've added some lettering and a couple of little uh, hearts on there. And I have used the simulated marrow stitch to create a really, really cool badge edge. And I've got to say, if you look at this badge edge here, how we've come down into this point of the heart, that's almost impossible to do, probably is impossible to do on a marrow machine because you, you can't get that perfect point there. So that's a real advantage on this new system that uh, Brian and the team at Brilliance have developed. So we're gonna create this file. Um, I'm going to be doing it a couple of ways and you'll see when I start, develop, uh, we'll start creating the file in Embrilliance uh, in Stitch Art is what happens, but I can do it using a, a backing as in a, um, or a badge fabric. In this case, I'm going to use a, a new product we have, which is a, a stitching felt. And you can also do it with just fill stitches. And um, it's really, really easy. You're gonna be amazed at how easy this, this is. So once we create the file, I'm going to do a couple of things after that. I'm going to save the cut file, because you can in Embrilliance. I'm gonna save a cut file, and I'm gonna take it to my scan and cut machine, and I'm going to cut a piece of our new stitching felt to exactly the right size we need to create this badge. I'm also going to save the design after that's done and we're going to stitch it out on a little NB180 because I'm going to make this so it fits in a 100 by 100 hoop as you can imagine it's not that big and badges typically are around that size so if you have one of the smaller machines like an NB180 uh, you can have a lot of fun creating badges. So that's the plan for today. I'll, I'll quickly show you here. Here's a slightly bigger badge I've already made and um, turned out a treat, uh, but I haven't washed away the wash away that I, I stitched it on. So we're gonna actually go through the process of how you would hoop, what you would use, in this case, wash away, and um, how you get to that finished, uh, finished position. Um, the products I'm going to use during this, uh, this demonstration will be, as I said, our new stitching felt. So. Um, it's a, a, a stiff, speci stiff specialty felt. Try saying that quickly. And uh, we've just got these rolls in and uh, perfect for doing um, badges, uh, photo stitching or bag, uh, 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 bag stiffening and that sort of, sort of thing. And we've got that in a black and a white um, roll. So they're now available on our website. So it's called Stiff Specialty Felt. The other product we would be using to create a badge is our hot melt film. Um, this one actually is hot melt web. We'll use the film. I'll grab the right one before we get to that. But the film is what goes on the back of the completed badge and that allows you to then press the, um, the badge onto whatever it is that you're wanting to, uh, to press it to. And that's a permanent adhesion. So 
They're the products we're going to use. Um, so right now, let's get into creating the file. Okay, so I have got Embrilliance open on my screen, and this, of course, is uh, the latest version. I've made sure I downloaded the latest version before we started this, and it's, uh, it's easy to do that. If you're not sure, just go to Help and check for updates, and it will tell you uh, that if your program is up to date, which mine is, of course. If it isn't, you'll just go to the normal pro through the normal processes and, uh, and update your software. Um, Right now, I also have my machine, my software set to show the 100 by 100 hoop, and that's because I'm going to be using an NV180, which has got a 100 by 100 hoop size. And to do that, you just go up into your preferences right there, click on that. I'm using a brother machine, so I have PES selected, and I have 100 by 100, and we click OK, and I have my hoop showing on screen, so it kind of gives me a good working sort of idea of what size my, my design is going to be. So right now we're going to bring in a heart shape. Now I could sit and draw it if I wish, but uh, I don't plan to because there's a load of great tools uh, in the um, in Brilliant Suite. So the first thing I want to do is merge a design. So we click on the Merge Design screen and or, or icon, and that opens up a whole heap of different built-in shapes. Now these are not stitch files, they're just outlines and um, we can then turn them into stitches. So I'm using a heart. Obviously, I've got the heart um, uh, menu selected, and we'll take that first heart and we'll click OK. It's a bit too small for what I want it to be, so I can either just click and drag and take it to the size I want, or I could click on this option up here that says Fit to Hoop. And if we were to click on that, for instance, that makes it nice and big. In fact, that's 85 by 90 millimeters. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to leave it at that size, but I could tweak it if I wished. Right now, with that heart set, I can simply and quickly turn that into a marrow overlock, or a marrow edging stitch. So all we need to do that is you must have in Brilliant Stitch Artist Level Three. Now to go to Stitch Artist, we click on the Create tool, and once I click on that, you'll see I have Level Three installed. I have all these tools across here. And the new tool that has just been added is this little guy right here that says Stitch Edge Patch Overlock Marrowing. So if I click on that, as long as I've got my object selected, it now turns that into a perfect marrow stitch or simulated marrow stitch on your software. And that you can stitch on your embroidery machine. How cool is that? Now, you'll notice that across on the right in my Objects pane and my Properties pane, I have a, um, under my properties pane, I have an option that says Edge. If I click on Edge now, I can make some alterations. This is actually telling me I can adjust the stitch properties, which is what I want to do. Uh, adjust the commands. I don't need to do anything. The great thing about Embrilliance is honestly, if you just let it do its thing, more often than not, it does it perfectly. So what I do want to do though, is tell it to add a light fill. Now you can see here, I can do a, a few options. One I could do is using a pre-cut shape. Now, that means if I was pre-cutting my um, badge fabric on my scan and cut, I could, um, I could use that. I can hand cut in the hoop, which is a typical applique method. And um, I can create a badge using just a fill stitch. So in other words, we, don't, we may not use any, any um, fabric or, or felt to create the badge, or I can add a light fill. I'm going to click on Add a Light Fill because I found this worked really, really well. So we click that and it now puts a very open light fill stitch down in the badge. I'm still going to use some felt, but I found by using this stitch and then a bit of felt, I get a really beautifully solid um, uh, quality badge and I get it, it looks really cool with the light, the light color stitching over the top. Now you do, to get the best effect there, you do kind of need to match the color of the thread with the color of the fabric or the badge or the, or the felt or whatever it is you're using it to create your badge. That's okay, I'm gonna leave it at orange at the moment, it doesn't really matter. Um, what I can do now is I need to add my, um, my detail to it. Now you can do whatever you like, but I'm just creating a fun little um, number one mum uh, Mother's Day kind of badge here. The first thing I'm going to do is add some text. So we just go up to the Create Letters option, and you'll see that brings in ABC. Obviously, I don't want ABC in there, so I'm going to go across to my 
uh, text box here and I'm going to type in the first line I'm going to do is number one. So we're just going to use the symbol and a letter and the number one and I'm going to choose. Let's just go over here and I'm going to choose uh, what font will we use? The one I used on my sample was the Penny, I think. Now I've got loads of fonts um, installed on here. You may not have this many fonts, so just choose one that is appropriate for you. So there's Penny, we're just gonna take that. And I want that a little bit bigger, so we'll just click and drag and make him bigger. And I want that to be sitting just up there. Now I wanna put in the word mum. So we go back and we just choose the letter A again at the top of the screen there, so right up there. That brings in ABC again, so this time I want mum. Of course, if you're in America, you might spell it differently, and that's okay, you can do what you like. I'm going to use the same font again, but this time I'm going to give it a bit of a style. So we click down on right there and click down to, uh, let me see, which one do I want? I think I want the bridge bottom concept there. That's exactly what I want. And I'm gonna stretch that down a bit. Uh, some people don't like stretching and manipulating fonts, quite honestly. I don't care because I'm in control here. I can do what I like. I'm gonna pull that U down just a wee bit more. So you can select on an individual letter and you can actually edit just that letter or the whole line of text. But, uh, whoops, let's click off there. That's what I want. Not too worried about the colors at the moment. We'll sort that out in a minute. I'm just gonna move that up a wee bit and then I'm gonna take this guy up a wee bit as well. And that's, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And I had on my sample little hearts everywhere. And this is so cool, this is very easy to do. I'm gonna bring in another heart shape. So I'm going to go up to the merge design up option at the top and I'm going to bring in a um, slightly different shaped heart. We might get this one here. That's way too big, so I'm just gonna size that down because I only want little hearts and we'll just move that. Whoops, picked up the wrong thing. If you make a mistake and you move something you didn't need to, just undo and that'll go back to where it should be. Uh, we'll try clicking on that there, move that up the top. So I want that little heart to be sitting up the top, maybe on a bit of an angle so we can just turn the little, using the rotation um, handle there, the little blue one, we can turn that around to whatever size shape we want. And I want to turn that into a satin stitch heart. So to do that, I just go back into my create tool and I'm going to use a satin column. And I do want to set my stitch angle. So I'll come across here and we'll just grab that little stitch angle or add inclinations tool. And I want to sort of come down on a bit of an angle there and a bit of an angle there. And it gives me a nice looking stitched, a nice stitched heart. And then just hit enter. So that little heart looks really good there. Now I want to put a few of those around on different angles and different sizes. So if I go to my copy and paste option, so we'll go copy up the top there and paste. I've now put another heart in, in place there. To move that around, I will need to go and select my select objects tool. So I'll do that. And we might move that one down to there, but this time we might rotate that around on a different angle and we might make that one a wee bit smaller. So I can do that. Now this is just a simple satin stitch and I could make this really quite small without having any issues with it stitching well. It'll stitch beautifully. And uh, we might paste another heart in and this time I'm gonna put that one over here, but that's gonna be really tiny, this one. So we're gonna go smaller again. And I'm kind of happy with that. And we could maybe rotate that around a bit more that way. So we just, you can put as many hearts in as you like. It's entirely up to you. We'll go and paste another heart in. And this one I'm gonna place down the bottom here. So I'll just drag that down there. And we might make that guy a little bit smaller and we might rotate that one back that on that angle. And then we'll paste another heart. And this one I wanna put over this side. We'll make that um, fairly small. And we'll put that one just there. And we'll paste, uh, let me see, we'll do one more. So, and we might bring that one down to here and make that a nice little tiny one as well. And we might move that one across just a bit. So there you go, that'll do us. Let's have a look at what we've got. So I've got my badge, I've got my background fill to go over the badge, the light fill. I've got uh, my text and I've got my little hearts there. Now, I do want to have a bit of a play with colors. I want to see what it might look like in different colors. So on your properties um, box over here, 
you'll see that shows all the colors. Now I'm using Hemingworth thread, so I could go and change my thread palette to Hemingworth. Just click on that and come over here and all these different thread palettes in Imbrilliance. It's fantastic. If Gosh, I think that just about covers every thread there is. So I'm going to choose Hemingworth and click OK. And that gives me my closest match for Hemingworth. Um, I do want to change the color of the background fill. So I'm going to click on that color tab and I'm going to go choose white. Now there's 300 shades in Hemingworth, so I'd have to scroll through to find it, or I could just search by the name. So I'm just going to type in white and go. There it is. So we'll change that to white. That looks a bit better. And if you wanted to play around and see what color you want the text, you can do that. I'm I'm probably just going to do it in red. So if I go and click on my letters options here, I could change that. In fact, I could pick up both of them, change them both at the same time, click on my color tab down here, and I'm already using the red that I want to use in my current design. So if I click on the palette tab here, it will show me all the colors I'm currently using in that design and I can change it. It's actually Hunter Orange, but that's okay. I know it's going to be a red and click that to there. So I've now got the same red all the way throughout and um, that design's pretty much finished. So as always, with um, when you're working in, uh, in, uh, in Brilliance or Stitch Artist, it's a good idea to save your design. It's a good idea to save your design or what you're working on in any software. But if we go up to File and um, and if you do that and just click on the Save uh, Save button, um, it's a new file. It's going to ask me for a name, but it, it's always a good idea to save it as a, a stitch and working file. So that means it's going to save both the, the file I need for my machine and a, and a working file, which means I can come back and edit it at any time. So if I was to click on Save As, and I'll just take that to my desktop perhaps for now. And I'll call that um, heart badge and hit save. We've now saved that file. So at least if something went wrong now and I made a big mistake, I can go back and open it up. What I do want to do though is also take the cut file for my scan and cut because I know that it's going to be much easier to use a pre-cut shape for my felt. That will be the shape of the heart. And to do that, I just need to determine uh, what part of the design it is I'm going to um, use. So if we go to the edge option up here, it shows me the three parts of that edge stitch. And I can tell you that the white is the uh, is going to let me... So click on the little white color tab and go up to applique. Uh, sorry, not the white, cancel that. It was the whip the pie. That's going to give me the placement stitch, which actually is the, the cut file that I want as well. So I click on the, the first color, applique, You'll see here it says applique position, and that's the, that is the size of the um, the badge I want. So I'm going to click on the cutting tag and click on save, and that will let me save this. And I'll save it to my desktop again. And heart dot heart one dot svg. That's not what I wanted. I wanted it as heart badge, but that's all right. That's the, that name will do me. And, but I don't want it as an SVG. I want to bring that in as a FCM file, which is for my scan and cut machine. So we click on save and I've now saved that as well. So I've got a cut file ready to cut. I've got a, um, a stitch file ready to stitch. And, uh, and that's how easy it was to create the, um, the little badge that we just made, all in Stitch Artist Level 3. Next step is to cut it and then sew it. Okay, so we're moving on to the next step of this little fun project, and that is to cut a piece of the um, stiff felt that we have. So that's the product here. The, uh, it's a new product for us, actually, and we've got it in black and white. It's excellent for doing badges and, and bad ma bag making and photo stitching as well. So uh, we'll get more information in due course on that. But it is now available, and it's on our website, and it is called... Uh, stiff specialty felt, white or black, so readily available. Now I have a little bit of a cut here, a little off cut from another project I was doing, and we're now going to cut out the badge shape out of this um, this product on a scan and cut. Now this is the SDX 1200, and fantastic machine. Now of course scan and cut, by virtue of the name, you know it's got a scanner built into it, makes it really easy to use little off cuts of um, of fabrics and things that you have to actually cut. Now, if we look at the badge that we're creating, that's the actual size. So this is one we've already stitched. And um, you can see that's more than big enough to cut out of this piece here. 
And if, in fact, if I hold this up in front of the camera, you'll see I've got two badges there. They're both the same badge. One of them is in fact uh, stitched using without any stitching on top of the felt. That's that one. And this one here is stitched using the light background fill, which really gives it a lovely texture. And I think it looks much better than just the plain felt. So that's what we're aiming for uh, to do. So let's get that out the way. Um, so we're looking at our Scan and Cut DX mat. Now this is um, a fairly old mat, so it's lost quite a bit of its tacky. It's not as tacky as it was, although it is only a low tack mat. So um, if you've got a mid tack or a standard mat, you might use that. I have just put a little bit, a very light spray of um, 505 uh, embroidery spray on the back of this just to make it stick a bit better. And I'm just going to place that down on my mat and um, I know that's going to stick pretty well. Now, again, this machine has a built-in scanner, so I can now scan my mat into the machine, identify where my piece of felt is, and just simply move my cut line to there. First thing I have to do, however, is get my cut line to the machine, and uh, I saved it onto a USB stick. I can do this wirelessly through um, the scanner cut canvas, but it's honestly sometimes just as easy to use a USB stick, if not easier. So we'll pop that in the side there. Remember when I was in Embrilliance, I, I went through to the applique screen and I saved it as a cut file. And uh, that's what's on here. It's an FCM file. That's what the scan and cut reads. And to load that, we'll use my stylus and try and keep my hand out the way. We just go into, in fact, now what we'll do before we do that is we'll, we'll put our mat in first. So my, um, my felt is securely attached to the mat. We'll pop that across here. I am working backwards, so it's much easier when you're in front of the machine. And I'm just going to hit this button here which now will take the mat in and hold it there for me. And so that's all good. Mat is in place. I now want to retrieve my data. So we just click on that button there. It's coming from the USB. And we'll just scroll down till we find the file. There it is. That's my file. It will come into the center of the screen. And obviously if I stitched it in the center, it's not, if I cut it in the center, it's not going to be right. So we don't want that to happen. But that is the right shape we want. So we click OK. And now I want to, I'm going to scan my mat in. So this little button here will let me scan the mat. And that will now, just click start to that. Scan that in and it'll show me on screen where my piece of felt is. So I can just simply move my cut file to exactly the right location. Uh, I love the Scan and Cut machine and um, the DX with the auto blade depth and pressure just changes everything. It's so much easier to use. So there is a scan. You probably won't see this terribly well on screen, but I can see where the felt is right there. Now I want to edit my design and I want to move the heart to be, stitching, uh, to be cutting on the felt. So if we click Edit, Object Edit, and we can go through, uh, actually, no, I went, went too far. Let's just go back out of there. Let's go to move. And I can actually just move it with the stylus. In this case, it's really easy. I just want to put it in the center of that, um, of that uh, piece of felt that's on the mat. But I can move it with the arrow keys if I really need to get a quite detailed position. So that's all good. I'm okay with that. And I don't think we're pretty much ready to go. Now I know this machine is already set on auto. Um, and that's the beauty of it because the machine itself will automatically sense the depth of what we're cutting and it will automatically sense the pressure. So you don't have to go through and set any of those functions. I'm really okay with all this. I'm just gonna click okay and please select. So it tells me what do you wanna do? Do we want to cut, draw, or are we doing embossing or foiling? We're going to cut. So I'm just going to click cut. And pressure is auto. Um, speed is on two. Half cut is off. That's fine. So really, it's everything's auto. That's what I want. And we just go start. It will now do a little test and test to see um, what it's working with. Now it comes and does a test on the actual felt. It works out how thick it is. So it'll do probably two cuts, maybe three cuts to get a perfectly clean cut. I've got it set fairly slow. It's only on two, but it could go a lot faster than that if I want. But um, for those of you who have a scan and cut with the uh, auto setting, you know how good it is. If you have an old scan and cut, one of the original versions, is it's really worthwhile considering upgrading to the new one. And then you should contact us for that because 
honestly, the new one is um, the cutting, uh, the automatic uh, functions on it just makes it so much easier, it really does. So it's doing one more little trim and that means it's going to be a perfectly clean cut. Just making sure we've got a perfect cut. Now that felt, of course, is quite thick. It's, um, it's a couple of mils, it's quite dense and um, it makes for perfect badges. So that's all done now, and if I click OK to that, and we can now take the mat out, pull that across to here, and as you can see, I can now just pull this off. That's left me with just the heart shape, and I know that's the perfect size for my badge. And we'd use the same process for creating an applique. It's really, really, really simple. And again, um, Scan and Cut is perfect for people who do lots of applique, particularly intricate applique where it's much easier to pre-cut the shapes than it is to be cutting in the hoop. So that's how we do that. And um, next step is get it to the machine and let's stitch it. Okay, so we've cut our heart shape, but you know what? I'm going to be using hot melt film on here too. And I want to apply that to the, the back side of the completed badge. And that's what's going to allow me to to attach it to whatever I want to attach it to, um, I may as well cut my perfect hot melt film shape as while I've got the, the um, cut line on the scan and cut. And this is the beauty of the automation on the scan and cut. All I need to do, and I've, I've got a piece of hot melt film, and that's, that's the role of hot melt film there, and it's a heavy duty um, permanent uh, double sided adhesion that is uh, heat activated. So I've just got a bit of a scrap here that I know is big enough, and all I need to do is place that on my mat somewhere. I'm going to go over here where it's a bit stickier and just stick that down nice and firmly and pop my mat back in. So we're back into the scan and cut. Um, I could go, I will go ahead and scan it again. I might struggle to see that on there, but we'll soon find out. So let's get back out of there for a moment and do a scan. Should have used my stylus. You can use your finger on the screens on these machines. The stylus just gets a bit more accurate, of course, but you won't damage it by using your finger. And there we go. So hopefully I'll be able to see on screen because it is white on white, so it might be a little bit difficult. No, no, I can clearly see where it needs to be. So all I've got to do now is move that across to be within the area that I know that my hot melt film is sitting on and that looks pretty darn good just there. It's on auto so all I've got to do is go OK, cut and now just hit start and the machine will do its little test. Checks to see what it's got to cut through. Another little test there. It'll realize it's not very heavy so it doesn't need much of a, of a pressure or depth. And uh, again, you just got to love it. It's just so simple. And there it is, all done. So let's just eject the mat now, take that away, peel that up, use my spatula is probably the easiest thing to do. Get under there. Now I don't want to peel the film off the backing paper. So when I when I peel this off, I've got to get underneath the whole thing and that's got it. So we'll just, oops, because if I peel the film off the backing paper, then I wouldn't be able to apply it. So I've now got my perfect piece of hot melt web ready to go on the back of my badge once I've completed the stitching. So now we'll go to the machine and stitch it. Okay, so we're ready to stitch the design. I've rearranged my table a little bit. I've got my NV180 to my right. Now this is a small hoop machine, of course. It only has a 100 by 100 hoop, but you can do a lot in a 100 by 100 hoop. And particularly badges, it's perfect for it. I'm going to be using wash away, two layers of wash away, the echidna wash away, to lay the foundation for me to build the badge. So just to recap, we're, um, we've stitched on the, uh, we're going to be stitching on the stiff specialty felt in white. We've cut a piece of that, which is this guy right here. We did that on the scanning cut. And we also just cut 
a piece of hot melt film exactly the same size to finish the badge off when we're, when we're finished stitching. Um, and right now we're using wash away. So this is the water soluble wash away. This is the product you use for lace making and you know, I, I like it as a stabilizer on the back of towels, but it's perfect for doing badges as well. So I've got two layers and I, I always recommend two layers because it just, it just ensures that things aren't gonna go wrong. And small hoops like this is a good opportunity to use the small off cuts that you often end up with when you're doing larger projects. So I've just got a, a, an off cut of our wash away here and we're going to put that in this hoop here. So we're gonna lay that out and you do want this to be nice and firm and tight. So we'll just get that hoop positioned nicely there. And before I push all that down, I'm going to make sure that I've got no, no slack in that at all. I really want it to be pretty darn firm. And, and if you don't get it firm enough, you know, I, I'm okay to give this a bit of a pull. We're not gonna be pulling the grain out of position, um, but we do want it to be firm. And sometimes, it just takes a bit of maneuvering around. I'm gonna make sure I've got that screw nice and tight there. I don't want any fullness in there at all. I don't want the badge to move. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. that that's, that's really nice and firm in the hoop. My hoop's nice and tight as well. I didn't damage it while I was putting it in. One of the things you can easily do with washaways and tearaways is when you're putting the hoop into position, if you've got the hoop too, too tight and you really have to force the inner ring into the outer ring, you can easily damage the stabilizer. You can cut it and tear it and then it renders it completely useless. Um, so you don't want to do that, um, but that's perfect. So wash away is done. The great thing about doing badges and lace is you really don't have to worry about design alignment or anything. You're just stitching somewhere in the hoop. Again, I'm standing behind the machine, so it's always difficult, but I'll do my best. The foot is in the up position. I've put a a fresh white bobbin in because the first part of this that I'm going to stitch is the white, the white stitching to cover the um, to cover the uh, pre-cut that I've done. So what I'm going to do is just pop the hoop into place. Now, of course, you could be on a bigger machine or a different machine. Yours will go on differently to this, um, and it's going to stitch the the shape or the outline of the design first, and that's going to give me a, a, an ideal placement for my pre-cut piece of felt. I do need to load the design, so let me just get my stylus and touch that. And we'll just click OK. So we need to whack the USB in. And I save my design to. Click the little USB button. Scroll along until we actually find the design we're looking for. There it is. Right there. Hit set. Edit end embroidery. I don't need to move anything or change anything. And right now we're good to go. Now I am going to, in fact, the first color I'm going to do, because this is like the placement stitch for where to put my, my um, pre-cut badge fabric, is I'm going to use this red. Now you'll notice I'm using a thread stand because I have a nice big spool of Hemingworth thread to use here. And if you have a machine that doesn't have the ability to take big spools and you'd like to, you know, get the convenience or the econ economics of this, just grab one of these little thread stands. They're fantastic. Sit it beside your machine like that. Thread comes off vertically. In fact, you can, you can use this equally for your small spools as well because it does give you a better, a better delivery of thread. Whoops. Again, when you're standing behind a machine, it's much harder to do things. And I'm going blind, so I can't hardly see anything. I'm gonna take that across to here. And I just flick that into there like that. Follow it around, my presser foot is up, so I know I'm in the right threading path. And we're gonna get around here. Excuse my hands for a minute. This is testing me now, I can hardly see, but that's all right. I know these machines like the back of my hand. Pull that up into the needle threader. And if I've done everything right, needle is threaded. So you can thread your machine from behind when you have a good machine. I'll just pull that bit through there and we're good to go now. So I've got a green light, the foot is down. Let's hit the go button and get this first little placement stitch done. And that will tell me exactly where I've got to position my, um, my pre-cut piece of fabric. And I'll be using 505 spray again, just to position this down and hold it nice and securely 
while we do the next lot of stitching. Now, because these machines have trimmers, so I don't need to pick up scissors or anything. I can just lift my foot. I do not want to move my hoop position though. So at this point, what I'm going to do is just very carefully take my hoop off. And again, it's much easier when you're in front of the machine. Carefully take that off, bring it out to the front. I'm going to position that exactly where you see it there. Now to do that, I'm going to grab my 505 spray again, but you can use any pressure sensitive adhesive basting spray, but this one is particularly good because it, they all gum up the needle to a certain extent, but this one doesn't do too bad at all. I don't spray the hoop because I don't want it all over my hoop. I will just lightly give that a spray. <laughs> Got it all over my fingers, that's great. Sticky stuff. And now, I'm going to position that exactly, and I mean exactly, over that stitching line. I don't want to see it missed anywhere. And that is pretty much perfect. Excellent. So now that we've got that in position, yeah, maybe not, maybe. I don't know, that's pretty good. I'm happy. Pop that back under the machine, hook it back into the machine like that. Now, I don't want to stitch red because I'm now going to stitch the white background. Now, I've, I've actually applied a light fill stitch to this, so I would always match my fill stitch to the color of the fabric that I'm doing because I just want to enhance the fabric look, and in this case, felt. Um, but it will look fantastic on felt, but I'm certainly not going to do it in red. So. We'll just trim that thread. And you remember, you should always, always pull thread through the machine, never backwards through the machine. And if I can grab that thread there, again, working from behind, take that red thread through. And now we're going to use the white thread that I have here. Pop that through there. Of course, I could put the thread up here if I wish, but sometimes I just think it's easier to use a thread stand. Give the thread a bit of a pull, make sure it goes into the tension. Again, come around from the side here, thread my machine up through there. I'll come around from here, cut that off, get rid of that bit, press a foot down, thread the machine, and that's all done. We'll just pull the thread through there like that. All good to go. And we're set to go to the next stitch, which is now a case of just hitting the go button and letting it do its thing. I've got a bit of a thread going on there. That should be all right. Now it's going to sew a fill stitch, a light fill stitch. So we'll just watch that sew for a minute. And once it's finished that, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so the white stitching is finished and that's uh, beautifully covered the, uh, the, the felt that we have there. I've changed over to the red thread and now we're ready to go to the next step. So let's just hit that start button and it will start doing the edge of the design now, that beautiful simulated Mero stitch. Okay, so the, the marrow edge or the badge edge has been done and as have the hearts that uh, we put in there, but you'll notice there's lots of uh, connecting stitches on top of that. And that's because this, this machine is obviously an entry level embroidery machine and it doesn't uh, trim the jump stitches. So at this point, we would take the hoop out and trim away all these jump stitches and then put that back in and then we'll continue on to finish the text. So uh, be back in a minute.
Okay, well, we've finished stitching the design. It's still sitting in the machine and um, we're gonna take it out, show you what we've got. Let me just lift that presser foot, lift the hoop up and there it comes. So here we go. Let me move some of those things out the way. I've already trimmed my thread, so I'm just gonna move that thread stand out the back there. I've got a couple of little trims still to do there and that's okay, I can do them now. Uh, I've got my little red scissors there, so I might just trim those away prior to taking it all out. Sometimes it's just a bit easier. Love these little red scissors. They're great, nice curve and, uh, curved and sharp tips. Okay, so now that that's all done, we just gotta pop the hoop out and peel that away and that's it that looks really really cool i bought in some hot water so this is quite hot straight out of the urn and we're just going to show you how easy it is to wash away the wash away if you've never seen this before and you've, you don't know what i'm talking about with wash away this is magic best thing is to trim the trim that back fairly close to the design be careful not to trim the uh, the stitches of course you don't want to do that uh, the least you have here, the easier it is to wash away. And uh, hot water is the best thing, but it will wash away in warm water. And we use this for towels and all sorts of things, lace making. So what we might do is we'll get the camera to have a real close up look of this as I put it in the hot water. Because again, if you've never seen this happen before, um, it's, it's pretty amazing to watch. I, I tell you what I will do also is just go through and trim some of the tails off the back here. Uh, we don't want all those threads because they're gonna get covered up with um, the hot melt film when we put that on, but um, that's not happening just yet. That'll do. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the water. I'm just gonna dip a little bit in there and wiggle that around a bit and you'll see, uh, grab my tweezers, there is where we dipped it. That's all disappeared. Of course, it's gone a bit darker color with the water, but that'll come back to normal. So what I'm gonna do is now pop that in there and just wiggle it around a bit. That'll dissolve all the wash away. I've got a bit of paper towel here, so we'll move that across for a moment. Get this out the way. Take that paper towel out. Now I'm using polyester thread, so it's quite color fast. The Hemingworth thread is excellent, 100% color fast. Pop that on there. Give it a bit of a pat down, just to get a lot of the water out. And couple of little bits of thread to trim off there not too much left but there's our badge that's all set to go now that's got to dry before I take the uh, hot melt uh, web or film that I've got once this is nice and dry I would just simply turn that around and iron on the um, the film to the back of it it has a backing paper on it so make sure you put the um, the glossy side down and then iron it on, the backing paper stays on until you're ready to use it. When you're ready to apply it, you just simply peel the backing paper off. The web, the film is attached to the badge and then you can apply it to whatever it is you want to apply it to. And um, that's all there is to it. So uh, that's how to make a badge. Kudos to Embrilliance for creating the most amazing simulated Mero stitch. And it really does look like a Mero machine has done this, but I know a Mero can't do that little corner, that little centerpiece of the heart. So it's it's even better again. But you can create any type of badge you want any using any shapes built into in Brilliance. Uh, create your own shapes, any size, whatever you want to do. It's all doable. So uh, we'll, um, yeah, we'll try and get some more little projects with the badge making done very soon, but uh, great product. And uh, hope you enjoyed this little video. Cheers. Thank you.